Welcome. Yes, welcome. We're going to have a great time today. We are. And we're, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but you're going to know in just a minute. And Larry Ford's going to be giving us our music today. And in a moment, I will tell you about our guest. Yes, we are excited to have our guest today. Larry Ford, praise him anyway. We'll start with Larry. Crank up the music, put your hands together. face where your heart is joy that cannot be erased cause you've had a bad day just picture this how pleasing it must be to God when trials come our way but we praise him anyway so give it up crank up the music give it up put your hands together give it up don't you know he's worthy give it up don't you know he's holy no matter what comes our way So give it up Crank up the music Give it up Put your hands together Give it up Don't you know he's worthy Give it up And you know he's holy No matter what comes our way We're gonna praise him every way Give yourself a gift when your heart is heavy it will change if you lift a sacrifice of praise just remember this that the enemy has to flee in jesus name it must drive him insane so give it up crank up the music give it up put those hands together give it up don't you know he's worthy give it up don't you know he's holy what comes our way so give it up crank up the music give it up put those hands together give it up don't you know he's worthy give it up oh you know he's holy no matter what comes our way we're gonna praise him anyway praise God from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures Give it up. We need to praise God. Well, Amen. our guest today, Joan Hunter, is a compassionate minister and an anointed teacher, an accomplished author and an anointed healing evangelist. And you may remember her folks. They were also great anointed evangelist and mm -hmm. now the second generation and our, she's been a guest on television and for years well not all that many years because I've been here years and she hadn't been here that long and we know her parents and I hope we know her as the happy hunter. It's so good to have Joan with us. 
God bless you. Well, I'm always yes. excited to be here and get to see you guys again, too. So, yeah. You know, we've known each other for probably 20, 25 years. Yeah. And my mom and dad always love coming and being on the program with you. And and uh, and it's just like we're just keeping the ball rolling. And I think this is five, five six, seven times I've been on here. And, and we're already talking about the next time, which is great. <laughs> I love it. Well, Bob yeah. said Charles and Francis Hunter, you're your parents mm -hmm. go way back with him at, through CTN. Right. Mm -hmm. Probably 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. Probably close to 40 years. Wow. Yeah. So I've known of you all that time too. So. And she's the but I'm not that old. She, <laughs> she's the only one that I know that has a watch like mine. And now I'm the only one that has a watch like yours too. That's so. right. I left it at home this trip, so sorry. Yep. But Joan has got some incredible good news for us today, especially if you're going through hard times yeah. and you don't know where the bread's coming from the next day. If you listen, Joan is going to give us some great scripture and some great advice. You want to hold her book up. Great book. Prayers and promises for financial breakthrough. Now, I know you're going to think she's going to tell us some secrets about, oh, uh, well, maybe the, what do they, what do, they do on stock exchange? Or, but she doesn't know any of that, really. But she knows where it really comes from. And so we've got lots of scripture. And she, now this may not be on the prompter, but she also has Promises of Abundance. Now this is a CD mm -hmm. that they can purchase and it really goes right along with this book. So we are just so thankful. We don't have a lot of people on the program talking about financial breakthrough. Seldom, in fact, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the uh, thing I want to really encourage you is all of a sudden you think, oh, they're going to talk about money. They're going to talk about finances. So at that point, click, turn the channel. Don't turn the channel. What God has given me is incredible revelations to make it better than where you are for in incredible, literally, keys of increase uh, and understanding really what your benefits package is, what is rightfully yours according to the Word of God, and that you deserve to be blessed you deserve to be blessed. And you're going to hear a lot of very new and unique ideas and thoughts and uh, so forth as we share today. And you think, well, you know, who are you besides the daughter of Charles or Francis Hunter? You don't understand where I am in the area of finances and poverty and so forth and so on. And, and one of my favorite sayings is, I know what it's like to be poor and I know what it's like to be po. <laughs> po, pose when you came in and afford the other O. That's when you're really, really poor. And Po is when you got to dig out of garbage cans in order to have enough food to eat. So that was me growing up. That's what we had. We had to go into garbage cans and get the old disgusting fruit out of the garbage can and try to carve out enough for a bowl of peaches. It's a whole, mm -hmm. it's amazing to go to the store and just pick up a peach without a spot, without a bruise, without a discount and be able to afford it. So we're going to be talking today about how not just to get the other O back, but to how to get out of poverty. And a lot of poverty actually starts with poverty mentality, poverty mindset. And we're going to do what we can do to, to not necessarily change your mind, but give you good reason and biblical reasons to change your mind and to get into alignment with his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm yes. all ready. Yes. You're ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, tell us about, um, what were we going to ask her? Oh, about in the beginning of the book, you talk about fasting. And that's a little different. A different kind of fast. What kind of fasting are you talking about? Well, there's a variety of ways you can fast. You can fast food, you can fast sweets, you can fast sugar, you can fast, a lot of people fast vegetables, but it's not really a fast, if you know what I mean. And, uh, but, but it's very important that, you know, like fasting the, you know, Facebook, whether that or, fa you know, television or different things like that. And so we, there's a lot of areas where we can fast, but it's very important that what we hear 
that it be the word of God. Because see, on many television networks, not Christian networks, but you know, public television, it talks about everything that's going to happen with our finances, with the stock market, with this, the value of our dollar, all this kind of stuff. You can listen to that and you can get worried. You can get sick, you can get uh, so fearful and you can get stressed out that it makes you sick so that you miss work and then it proves that you're losing money. <laughs> Okay, just because of the words that are going forth. And so it's very negative important. Words. Negative words yeah. that are going forth. And so it's important that what we hear is important. Well, you know, and, and what we hear can also be from ourselves. Like, you'll never get out of debt. You know, who do you think you are? Or I'll never get out of debt. And, and so another area is like when you give an offering, whether here to the network or in church or different things like that, you give and you go, well, there goes that hundred dollars or whatever, as in comparison to say, go and grow. And, and it's like, or you think that giving never works. Every time I give an offering, God multiplies it. And we've got to change our thinking, change our verbiage, what's coming out of our mouth. So you said for a whole month, I want you to do this. Fast negative words. And that's hard. Yeah. yeah. See, and that's hard. And to fast negative words, you really need to just do away with negative words. The main thing is coming out of your mouth. That okay? was next. Declaring yes. and decreeing. How De important is that? Very, very important. It's like you can declare and decree. Now, this is what I do in my healing schools. And I teach about the authority that we have as a believer. Jesus comes in, all power and authority and his mind. Everything comes in. The word of God says, stir up the gifts that are within you by the laying on of hands. A baby born has everything it needs, needs food and education. But everything else is already there, just needs to be nurtured. Same thing is when we become a Christian, that everything we need is actually already in there. We don't need to pray for the gifts of healing. It's in there. We need to develop it by education, books, you know, seminars, etc., and develop what's already in here. Well, all power and authority, all inclusive of everything, excluding nothing, all power comes in. So we have all power to curse the cancer or to curse our spouse, to curse our finances or to curse COPD. OK, it's all the same power and authority, but we don't think about it being the same. What it is, we, we know we have the power to curse sickness, cast out devils. That's according to Mark. But the same power comes with the negative words. My husband will never change. Giving never works. All power and authority because of the word has come into agreement with you that that is the truth even though it's not the truth according to the word of God. It adds the power to our negative words. Yeah. And so it's not we're just not saying it, but like if we give, it curses not only that offering, but our finances. Yeah. And then so we, calling things that be not. You know, Paul talks about that. Calling things that be not as though they were. Right. So what you're really saying is we don't say what we're seeing or hearing, but we say what the word says. We say what we want to see. Right. Our words are powerful, aren't they? Right. Like, you know, and, and the word says, put the vision in front of you. So if you're believing God for a new car, put the a picture of the car on your fridge uh, or on the mirror in your bathroom. That's good. Or if you're believing God to get out of this little bitty apartment into a house, you know, for you and your family and so forth, put a picture of a house that's something that what you generally want. Put the vision in front of you. And God will not dangle a carrot in front of you for you never to eat it. He wants you to see this vision so it be, can become your memories. And, and the same thing goes with the house, etc. <laughs> and so it's so important that we, what, what we see, what we hear, what comes out of our mouth, and in particular confess that we are declaring, decreeing every time I give, tithe, offering, whatever, God multiplies it back. And I've made a decision, I'm only going to tithe once a week because I get multiple money throughout the week. And instead of writing, you know, I, I'm still the old fashioned way, write checks. And, you, uh, you know, text giving is, is great too, but you know, you can write, write these checks, but I could write like five a week. And so I was like, okay, once a week, I'm gonna write a tithe check because the blessings of God are running and overtaking me. That's the word of God. Not the devil is always after me. The blessings of God are running and overtaking me. Amen. Well, the thief does come to kill, steal and destroy, but who does he go after? 
He goes after the weak. He goes after those that are confessing that the enemy is always after them. Yeah, that's good. Because that's an open door. Amen. Well, you said God gave you great revelation concerning scriptural giving. I just thought, wow, you've got to talk about this because I, I guarantee you there are people out there that have never even heard of this, and yet there are so many miracles and testimonies that have oh, come I, forth I have, from I, this revelation. Probably 100,000 testimonies on scriptural giving. Wow. It's so amazing. So what is it? Scriptural giving is you have a scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, which is future. So you would give $29.11 based on that scripture if you need greater direction for your future. If you're believing God, um, like this is something that I do, always when I go on a foreign trip, I always cede $91.10 for God ordains our steps and protects us. Okay, and so I've gone all over the world and I've never had a problem, which that's mm. a miracle. Wow. You know, yeah, and so amazing. and so I always see that. And uh, and so it's, it's just awesome what God has done, how he's protected me. I mean, we're talking Haiti, we're talking India, you know, different yeah. places like that, third world countries in addition to other places, too. And, um, and so I've always seeded that and I've been protected. It's absolutely amazing. Another one, which is really awesome, is Isaiah 49, 25. And it starts out with, but thus says the Lord. That means pay attention here. Yeah. And it says, he who contends with you, I will contend with. And the last part is, I will save your children. Our job as parents is not to save our children, train them up when they're younger yeah. and not preach them when they're older because they'll rebel but love them and leave their, their salvation to God. And God will put people in their path to, you know, to talk about Jesus, which is like so exciting. And uh, I was just recently, um, you can't buy your children's salvation. So let me just kind of say it, but you can mm -hmm. seed for it and you can seed for people coming into their life. The other day, uh, it's a long evolved story. Earlier this year, my daughter, my youngest daughter was diagnosed with stage three cancer. And I said, uh, ex uh, no, this is not an option. Um, you know, it's just flat, not an option because she's my daughter. She's my seed. She's covered under my covenant and she's going to live and not die. And we just, that, uh, that's just not an option. And the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I Absolutely. Love and, love uh, you know, and so she, she shaved half of her head, which is kind of stylish now to get her son prepared for chemo for when she loses her hair. I mean, she did all of her thinking, you know, and planning and all this kind of stuff. And unfortunately she planned for the worst. But I'm like not accepting it. I happened to be when the second diagnosis of the, the stage three cancer, I was actually in Israel. So I'm in Israel and that day is the day of going to the wall. And so I'm at the wall and I'm praying and her name is all over that wall, stuck in the wall. And I'm like, no, she shall not have cancer. She's going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Get back to the hotel. They said, there's a 57% chance of a misdiagnosis. I said, we're going to be in one of those 57. So within two days, they, they raised it to 91%. And I'm like, you're going to this. And, and, she's, and she started quoting me scriptures. I'm like, this is awesome. And uh, because she's technically not living for the Lord. You know, she made a salvation you know, commitment to the Lord years ago. And uh, so anyway, long story short is um, they have come back. They sent it to four different locations. John Hopkins was the last. And they said, this is severe, severe, severe endometriosis, which looks almost like a twin to cancer. And wow. she did have a hysterectomy, but if not taken care of, it would turn into cancer. So she's totally cancer free, no chemo, no nothing, everything. So then I'm out in Arizona. She goes to the oncologist to get the final no chemo, you know, statement and everything. And so she's there and, and there was a lady where well, she's getting her, getting her blood work and there's a lady there and uh, who's getting ready to have the same surgery. She goes, the doctor's really good. Let me show you my scar. So my daughter shows the scar. It's this big. Okay. Complete hysterectomy with a snip, snip and out. I mean, I just wow. think that's amazing. And so she, the other lady goes, here, let me show you my scar. And so she shows her scar. This is my miracle scar. I'm going, miracle? I'm going, miracle? I heard the word miracle. My daughter and, and the couple, he's a retired pastor, spirit-filled, and she's, they're my age, and they hit it off. They're having lunch together. They're preaching to my daughter. Isn't that Amazing. awesome? Amazing. And they have become friends, and, and they're doing the preaching. I'm just doing the lover. I'm just doing the, the mom part. <laughs> Loving but it's her. so neat because, and I seated right when I got that diagnosis I will, that says, I will save your children, I will heal your children, I will bless your children. And it was so awesome what God oh. has done. 
He yes, is, is a miracle it makes, worker. <laughs> it makes giving fun. Yes. Yes. It gives, and you give with purpose. And that's and what's expectation exciting. expectation, too. Though. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, we have a camera person yes, right we here. Do, Mr. Robert over there. That was totally healed from cancer. Yes. Praise he, God. He went yeah. through a lot, but every time they would come back from the hospital, I would say, what have you done? And well, they witnessed to this doctor always and witnessing. this doctor. And yeah. Always, always witnessing and to the other people mm -hmm. that had cancer. Ministry you have your own mission field in, in hospitals. Yes, yeah. and they did. And when we got the signal from the doctor, cancer free. Yay! Yay. Woohoo! Rejoice. Dancing behind the camera over here. <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a break and yeah. more music by Larry Ford. But we'll be back. Stay with us about financial miracles. This is Andrew Womack, and I'm one of the broadcasters here on CTN, and I just wanted to wish a great celebration to CTN for 40 years in the ministry. You know, that you have enabled me to take the ministry that God has given me and reach out to people, and I just want to thank you. And on behalf of all of the viewers for Christian Television Network, we want to say thank you for being faithful for 40 years. God bless you. I believe the best is yet to come. It takes faith. Ooh, it takes faith. God made a promise long ago to a man named Abraham. And he said, pack up and get ready to go. I'm giving you the promised land. So at 75 more dead than alive, he said goodbye to earth. His faith was great. No, he didn't wait. Trusted the voice that he heard. Cause it takes folk, a little hard work and a lot of faith. You gotta have both, and a little of what you do mixed together with what you say. It's not just believing and receiving everything from the Father's hand, it's getting up and going to the promised land. Jesus was teaching at a home in Capernaum, a crowd had gathered round and four guys with a crippled man dug a hole and lowered him down. Well, their faith was great and they wouldn't wait. The man wasn't in it alone. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, take up your bed and go home. Cause it takes both a little hard work and a lot of faith. You gotta have both a little of what you do mixed together with what you say. Not just believing and receiving everything from the Father's hand. It's getting up and going at His command. Without faith it is impossible to please the Lord. And those who earnestly seek Him, He will reward. Never did get nothing done. We're justified by faith, it's true. But faith never works alone. No, no, no. Cause it takes both a little hard work and a lot of faith. You gotta have both a little of what you do mixed together with what you say. Not just believing and receiving everything from the master's hand. It's Getting up and going to the promised land. Whoa, it takes faith. It takes faith. It 
takes faith and it takes work. It takes them both, doesn't it, Joan? It does. It does. <laughs> they go hand in hand together. Yes, it, yes. it does. And that's what he's saying about. Yeah. You have an incredible testimony. We talked about this in the green room. I wanted you to share this. Concerning a contract, you sowed a seed and you stood on Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against me. Kind of, yes. That okay. one and another one. Okay. And, uh, and it's so amazing. That, and, and in regards to scriptural giving, it is so much fun. So much fun. And, uh, but to, and to see the results of it is just absolutely amazing. And uh, a few years ago, probably 12 years ago, I had a dream that our dear friend Marilyn Hickey betrayed me. Now, she's like a mom to me. She says, I'm your mom now. Yeah. Okay, and these are my girls. And she pats Sarah and my aunt knees, you know. And, uh, and so I know, I mean, Marilyn doesn't have a betrayal bone in her body mm -hmm. at all. No, okay. she doesn't. And, but God will give you dreams like that. I'm like, I woke up, I told my husband Kelly, I said, that is the strangest dream I've ever had. He goes, she would never do that. Then I get a phone call from somebody closer than Marilyn had betrayed me. And I went, whoa, and it was a prophetic warning to have my, you know, be aware that something was getting ready to happen. And I had gone into contract, there was three of us. Now when there's three, two can outvote the, the one. And so I found out that I was in contract and I got voted out. And I got mad, I got angry. Anger comes from unmet expectations. They did not meet my expectations. I, I did what I could do in the natural. I called the attorney. I said, what can I do? He says, nothing. I said, okay, nothing in the natural, but yes, in the spirit. So I got out my checkbook. I wrote a check for $54.17, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me, we have the power to condemn. And then also Isaiah 49, 25, which I just quoted is, but thus says the Lord, he who contends with you, I will contend with and I will save your children. Okay. So I stood on those two words, forgave, because if That's I didn't, big, isn't it? Uh, That's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, it is. I had to forgive for that betrayal and I had to go on, but I had done my part. Okay. And so the contract came to fruition about two years after that. I've kind of forgotten about it. So then I got a call saying, I need you to go to your safety deposit box and get out the new contract. I go to my safety deposit box and I get out the new contract, the, the new, I go and there's no new contract in there. I put it in there. Okay. And I'm pretty much the only one that goes to the safety deposit box. I put it in there and I'm like, this is crazy. I don't know what, I don't, you know, so I told myself, I don't know what happened to it. The other two people had theirs, one was original, one was an authorized, notarized copy. I had an authorized, notarized copy, okay? Both of those were no longer in the safety deposit box. So that meant the old contract stood. <laughs> really? Yes, it was so exciting. Wow. And I'm like, and so the other people said, you know, well, it was just money. I'm like, no, it was a principle. Yeah. <laughs> it was a principle, not yeah. just the money, you know, but it was a principle. And God says, touch not mine anointed. That's right. Yeah. And, and what was stolen, the enemy, what, um, what, what the enemy stole from me, God restored, which is so awesome. And another scripture that I absolutely love, I actually, I love them all, but, um, but there's another scripture and it's, um, um, I, I see it's Deuteronomy 111. And it talks about how God wants to bless you a thousand times more numerous than you are. Well, giving a dollar eleven, if you can't afford more than that, or eleven dollars eleven cents. But my favorite is one hundred eleven dollars, and and I partner with my ministry on the eleventh of the month, one hundred eleven dollars every month, and and I can't even begin to tell you what God has done to my finances. I mean, I can't literally, I cannot begin to tell you. My finances have totally turned around. Uh, in, in just in an absolutely incredible way. I mean, God has multiplied every donation that I give uh, in addition to that one. And, you know, pretty much when I go to places, I give $111 in different ministries and so forth because I want to, and this sounds kind of strange for some people, I want to get more so that I can give more because in, in giving, and I want to encourage all of you that are watching, really pray about making a donation here to CTN for $111. Watch what God will do with your finances. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. I have a book 
which pertains to finances, which I've uh, you know offered here on the program before. And this is called supernatural provision. Talks a little bit about you know scriptural giving and things like that. I presented my manuscript and they said it went through the process and they said we love the book except the part on scriptural giving that that is it's heresy because it's not in the Bible. When the Bible was written, it was basically one paragraph per book. There was no 2911. <laughs> there was no 111. Yeah. That was added, okay? So, and I said, well, then you're not publishing my book because this is a revelation that God gave me. And so at that point, I said, I, you know, I said, this is what I want you to do. There was two people, O-line churches that had never heard of this before. You tell them to go to their church on Sunday, give $111, then you get back with me next week about publishing it. They did, and it's in the book. Yeah. Those two women had supernatural financial breakthrough in their finances. They were just going to prove me wrong. Well, they didn't prove me wrong. They proved God right. <laughs> And, and so yes. I want to encourage you because the word says, try, test me, try me, prove me now with your tithes and offerings. So give an offering here. Watch what God will do to your finances. It's absolutely miraculous how God will turn it all around. Yes. Well, that reminds me of sowing in good Amazing. soil. Talk absolutely. Absolutely. What is considered good soil? Definitely CTN, yeah, for sure. We agree. <laughs> yes, you know. Through what 18 million have come that we know of that have gotten in contact with the ministry. Isn't that great? Have come into the kingdom of God and gotten saved. 18 yeah. million. 18, 18 million, million salvations. Since what, 2012? Yeah. So just since 2012. Okay. Seven years. About seven, eight years in here that that many people have given their life to the Lord. Okay. Yeah. That This is good soil. And if you're believing God for breakthrough, make sure that you give into good soil. This is good. This is great soil, not just good. This is good soil. They're seeing the miraculous. They're bringing the miraculous to you. They're bringing the word to you. Yes, salvation, but also words just to help you in every way. Amen. And, and this is another area that, um, that I think really helps people because it's like, well, you know, we're supposed to be poor like Jesus. No, people misconstrue that scripture, okay? And that period of time in his life. Number one, you know, Jesus took stripes on his back for healing. Easy to accept. He died so that we could live. Yes, he took the sins on the cross. But scripture says he dies so that we could live and have life abundant. It yeah. also says he became poor so you could be rich. Okay? So that we could be rich. Say the scripture. He became poor so that I, you say I, can be rich. Now, Jesus was poor three years of his life. He gave up his wealth to, and see, when he was born, the wise men brought precious gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They didn't bring a little bag of gold. They had a caravan carrying gold, frankincense, and myrrh, provision, authority, and healing. Mm -hmm. That's what it stood for. Everything Jesus needed in his life came, okay? The same thing with us. Provision is there, but he became poor. He sacrificed so that we could have wealth. Yes. And it's not to have gimme, 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 wealth, wealth, wealth. I'm rich, 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 ego, ego, ego. No, it's so that we can help fund CTN, Amen. that we can help fund the ministries, what God's doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're touching the world here, which is like amazing. And I know the, you know, I, I love television and, and internet and Facebook and all, because we can touch the world through all of that, That's which right. is awesome. Yes. But see, I want you to grasp the scripture. I don't want you, when you go to heaven, I don't want God to say, I had so much more for you, but somebody talked you out of it that you weren't worthy. And another great story that is, that really, really helps is several years ago, about 10 years ago, my daughter was expecting her first child. And, um, and I had waited 11 days. She knows how to bring on labor. She, she did everything she could do. And that baby wasn't going to come for nothing. Okay. And so I said, I'm thinking that in my mind, I might have to miss this out of seven. She's the only birth I missed of my grandchildren. And I said, let's go to this computer store. So we're looking and I said, I want to buy you a really nice laptop. And, you know, my daughter goes, and I said, because it looks like I'm not going to be here. My laptop can be in labor and delivery. I'll be on the other end when I'm in Florida and I'll be, I'll be there every moment I can interact. And my son-in-law 
threw, I mean, he threw a fit. He threw a fit. You will not buy us a computer. You will not. And I said, how about if I buy it for me and leave it at your house? You will not. I mean, we had to, we had to leave the computer store. He got so loud. And so we're out there and I'm like, I'm trying to give you a really nice computer laptop and you're refusing it. And so his wife goes, my daughter, buy the computer. I'll deal with him later. I said, okay. So I went back in and I got it. And, and that, that actually was in the labor and delivery room. And uh, it was not the same, but it was, it was really, really the awesome. The next best thing. The next best thing. Next, her other child, I did, I actually got to be in the labor and delivery and, and walk the whole thing with her. And it was, it was really cool. And, uh, but a few years later, a couple years after that, I met his father. And they're like two peas in a pod. And he says, I'm so proud of my son. I said, you know, I'm really proud of your son too. And then he says, I've raised him never ever to accept anything from anybody he didn't work for. I went, dun, 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 bingo. <laughs> Here we have a problem. He did not work for it. He could not receive it. He's gotten over that. He goes, hey, mom, when are you coming back to Arizona? We can go <laughs> shopping. Yeah. So he's gotten over all that, which is great. But you need to get over that, that if you haven't worked for it, you haven't earned it, it doesn't mean that God doesn't want to bless you. He's looking for people that he can bless, but you've got to be in an attitude of receiving. And, and people have a hard time receiving the blessings of God. It's true. Don't you well, think it's teaching that they got years ago? A lot of it is. The teaching, the, the mm -hmm. deception. It is. It's really deception. You know, it's so blessed to be poor. No, man, it stinks. Been there, done that, don't want, yeah. it stinks. It, that's an understatement. It's flat stinks. Okay? And, it, and the thing is, is that, you know, well, you're talking about money, you're talking about, I'm talking about abundance. Now, f uh, physically, okay, because I deal with healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances, not to leave out finances. But if you are strapped financially, you're in a lot of debt, you have stress, okay, it can cause headaches, migraines, insomnia, acid reflux, heart attacks, strokes, even to the point of death, even extreme, even to the point of suicide. It can cause hiatal hernias, ulcers, IBS, Crohn's disease, and really hard to live with, and the number one cause of divorce. Okay, mm -hmm. so getting out of debt financially is for your own well-being. Yes. Okay? When people think about, you're just talking about money. I'm talking about getting your body healed from the top of your head, the soles of your feet, because debt and financial stress can destroy your life. You know, just think about, okay, I have an extra thousand dollars this month. Who should I send it to? CTN. Yeah. And so... <laughs> Let me help you there. But see, how awesome is that to have an extra thousand to five thousand dollars a month? Well, that'll never happen. Shut your mouth. That's your words. You gotta watch That's, your words. You gotta watch your words, okay? We had one guy come into a service, and uh, I've known his parents for 40, 50 years. He comes in, in his mind, he's got, I'm gonna give fifty dollars. And so he's filling out an offering envelope and he writes five zero. God says 500. He says 50. Do I hear 50? God says 500. He says 100. Do I hear 100? God says 500. Now the guy could afford 5,000 without a problem. So he writes, he goes ahead and gives $500. You know, not begrudgingly, but he did it in obedience. This is a major key. When God tells you to give something, give it in obedience. That's where it will supernaturally multiply. So he gives the 500. He, he's worked for this company for 17 years. He gets pulled in the office the following Tuesday. This is Sunday, two days later. And he goes, you know, you've worked here long enough. You know, it's a company policy, no bonuses. We do not give bonuses. Here's a check for $5,000. No. Two days later, and a company that never gives bonuses. He also got like a $5 an hour raise. Okay, so that you multiply that by 2,000 hours, that's another substantial raise. And in the last three years, he's gotten at least one to two bonuses every year. Plus, he continues to get raises and raises and raises and raises. Oh. And, and he's Because he all, believes it, the word and he's a giver. Yes. He watches what comes <clears throat> out of his mouth. And he was obedient. Obedient. Yes. yes. And another That's thing. A big deal. And this just happened this last week. His, he's divorced. He has a 19-year-old son. And his ex-wife moved away and took the son. He was devastated. He and his grandma, the grandma and grandma, grandpa I know really well, they both seated $49.25. He moved home this week. Oh, really? Isn't wow. that awesome? So many testimonies. It's, yeah, it's awesome. 
Wow. You know, and in giving, and it's like, what pertains to you? What do you believe in God for? Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall accomplish where to I send it. it. The finances will come back in the area where I'm sending it. If you're believing God for a car, a house, a relationship, whatever, whatever it is, you speak, give that offering purpose and power. Amen. That's good. Woohoo! Well, Hallelujah. Right. If you're not excited over this. <laughs> We've got more music by Larry Ford after the break. And he, I hope he has some music that fits in with the program that we're talking about. All the others have. Yes. And I think this one <laughs> probably too. Larry? Every project is a process. And in his working on us, God has a purpose and plan. His workmanship can be seen in the details of what Jesus has done through us. So walk in his process. Find your purpose. I'm going to tell you where my hope is. My hope is not in an organization. My hope is not in a plan. My hope is not in a treaty. My hope is in a man, a person that sits at the right hand of God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. And my hope is centered totally, completely in Him. to hear the wind sing as it whistles through the pines on mountain peaks. Well, he loves to hear the raindrops as they splash to the ground in a magic melody. And he smiles in sweet approval as the waves crash to the rocks in harmony. All creation joins in unity to bring to him majestic symphony. But his favorite song of all is the song of the redeemed. When lost sinners now may plead, lift their voices loud and strong. When those purges find the blood, lift to him a song of love. Nothing more he'd rather hear, none so pleasing to his ear as his favorite song of all. He loves to hear the angels as they sing, Holy, holy is the Lamb. Heaven's choir in harmony lift up the praises to the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When he lifts his hands for silence, when the weak is saved by grace begin to sing. And a million angels listen as a newborn soul sings, I've been redeemed. Now that's his favorite song of all. It's the song of God's redeemed. When lost sinners now may flee. Oh, they lift their voices loud and strong. When those purchased by his blood lift to him a song of love. Nothing more he'd rather hear, none so pleasing to his ear as his favorite song of all. 
It's not melodies and harmonies that capture his attention. It's not clever lines and phrases that cause him to stop and listen. But when any heart set free, washed and bought by Calvary, began to sing. That's his favorite song of all. It's the song of the redeemed. When lost sinners now may Lift their voices loud and strong When those purchased by His blood Lift to Him a song of love Nothing more He'd rather hear None so pleasing to His ear As His favorite song of all Holy, holy Holy is the Lamb, hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb, hallelujah, oh hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Larry. Well, it's time for We the People. This is a segment that will keep you informed about our nation's Christian heritage and freedoms. The better citizens we will be. Here's this week's edition of We the People. Today we have a history lesson for you that'll be a lot of fun. It's a look at how ridiculous it is to try and separate the Christian founding of our country from government. That was not the intention of our founders or any of the early governments of the colonies or states. The liberties and freedom found in the Bible are what made this Christian country great and the light for the rest of the world. The Bible was so instrumental in the early United States that hundreds of town names were based on it, like Corpus Christi, Texas. Adopted in 1847, the Latin translation means the body of Christ. Here are a few others. Christian County, Kentucky, Bible Grove, Illinois, Bible Hill, Tennessee, Bible School Park, New York, Bible Grove, Missouri, Bethesda, Galilee, Gospel, Bethlehem, Trinity, St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John, St. Mary, St. Joseph, St. Stephen, Mount Zion, Noah, Jericho, and the list goes on and on and on. But it's pretty funny to think that people try to claim that we weren't founded on the Bible when you look at the town they live in, many of them are standing on property named after the Bible. If Christianity has no place in our schools, courts, or government, then many of these cities would have to change their names. The Bible had such a profound impact on early America that its influence is etched into many of these cities forever. That doesn't represent the actions of people that wanted to keep the Bible out of the government courts or schools. These cities and towns were all founded to show their respect and honor for the Bible. More historical facts proving the truth that our early founders included Christianity in the government. Amen. Thank you, Robert. Well, we wow. know that that is the truth. Now, no matter how they try to fight in Washington and kick out everything that's godly, it comes right back and it'll slap them in the face. If we pray and if we believe that God is the answer, Amen, John. Amen. That amen. was awesome. <laughs> yes, amen. I want to encourage all of you that are watching. Uh, this particular CD is the Promises of Abundance, and it's me reading scriptures on abundance, declaring, decreeing, speaking over you, soaking music behind it by Julia Meyer. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, or faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. People play this in their homes 24 hours a day. What has happened to their finances is amazing. But what happens in their finances has to start here. 
And I want to encourage you, it's time that we have the mind of Christ regarding our finances. And when you have that, it will show up in the bank account supernaturally. Amen. That's Amen. <laughs> supernaturally. We that word. Yes. Now, how does giving tie in with healing? Same, well, same yeah, principles? Same, absolutely same principles. You seed for what you need. Okay, if it's finances or whatever, you seed and God will follow through with his word. Now, he promises that as you give, you're going to receive, press down, shaken together. Now, here's a key word. Shall man or woe man give under your bosom, your purse, your pocket, different things like that. And, and this, when you get that revelation that God is looking for people to bless, it's majority of the time will not come flying from heaven. OK, it will be handed to you, you know, with with a check or something like that and go, oh, no, that's OK. I'm believing God for one hundred dollars. The check was for one hundred dollars. OK, people refuse that because they're expecting it to come supernaturally. That is supernatural. God moves on a stranger yes. to give you one hundred dollars. OK, Amen. that's God. Yeah, that absolutely. is a supernatural. But understand, there are money coming in from very unusual, unexpected sources. Uh, there's another one, Isaiah 45, 3. I will give you hidden treasures. Treasures refers to finances. I read that scripture thinking it was trauma, cellular memory, different things like that in the area of healing. But it's supernatural finances. I seeded, all of a sudden money started coming in. Somebody that owed me money from years ago. This happened, that happened. And then I thought, okay, it kind of stopped. So I seeded it again. I got a letter in the mail saying, you don't own any taxes on your property downtown Houston. <laughs> no joke. Wow. What property downtown Houston? So I put it in recycle. Glad thing I recycled. So put it in recycle, went on a trip, came back, and I thought, I sent a certified letter. What does this mean? It means that my dad left me 2% in a building in property downtown Houston. Came as a total of probably about wow. $50,000. Wow. Very unexpected. Very unexpected. Yeah. So there's money that is rightfully yours that we haven't claimed yet. And by yes. giving that scripture or that scripture amount, then all of a sudden these, these little areas that God owes you money or that people owe you money, it will just pop up. It's so amazing. Wow. So who, who do you know that you look to as one of the greatest givers in the country today? Uh, the greatest giver, of course, would be God because he gave his well, only son. I know that. Absolutely. You know, um, I would say, I, I would probably say me because I know that personally, uh -huh. you know, and giving over 40 to 50 percent of our income away before taxes, we have more and we end up and we don't have to pay tax because we give so much away, which that's yeah. the way you need to do it. OK, give it that's to good. our father, not our uncle, Sam. Amen. OK, and uh, and then, you know, anybody that does television is very giving. You know, and I could I could name names like, you know, Joyce Meyer and Joyce Meyer, you know, Joel Osteen, uh, Marilyn Hickey, Joan Hunter Ministries, you know, of course here. And I, I know what you've done for revivals and you'll just put revivals on. But let's just come together in prayer because yes. right now you are here and you're hearing us. I want it to penetrate here. I want it to get into here. Let me just put it a different way. I want you to get the message today. That adds a little bit of power to it. <laughs> and be so, saved. Yes. Know Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very important. The greatest gift of all is salvation. And just repent. Say, I repent. I need you in my life. And Father, I thank you right now for coming in, not only healing my life, healing my spirit, but turning my finances around today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's good. <laughs> Amen. Well... We have a closing song. I don't know where all the time goes, but Not. how great thou art. <laughs> and no one sings it better than Larry Ford. That how so great thou art. Amen. Yeah. Here's Larry. O oh Lord, my God, when I, in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made, 
I see the stars and I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout all this universe display. Mi corazón en ton a la canción. Cuán grande es el. Cuán grande es el. Then sings my soul. My Savior, my God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! When Christ shall come with a shout of acclamation and take me home oh what joy will fill my heart then I will bow there in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior my God to thee oh how great thou art Oh!